Hey everyone, and welcome to our discussion of basic mechanical principles. <clears throat> Should get through those a lot more quickly since they're probably pretty familiar to you folks now that um, we have the math that we're going to do use to describe it in continuum mechanics fashion. So, like I said today, it's about balance of mass. <clears throat> in the rest of the course, we'll be concerned about three kinds of regions. This is a little preface to the rest of the lesson. The first of these is material regions, so they're just subsets of the reference body. <clears throat> and they'll be denoted with a non-italicized letter like that. The second is spatial regions that convect with the body. And they're denoted with an italicized letter, sub T, <clears throat> and that is equal to the deformation applied to P. Whoopsies. At time T for a fixed P in the reference body. <clears throat> and third is spatially fixed control volumes. And the book denotes them with a uh, kind of slanty but not italicized letter. Um, I'll probably end up writing it more like that, but if it's the letter R, it's probably going to be a control volume. I'll, um, I'll always say if it's a control volume. Um, so material is free to flow through a control volume. It doesn't necessarily move with the body. Now, in, in general, control volumes do not necessarily need to be spatially fixed. Um, they can deform arbitrarily. You know, they can move relative to the body. You could pick a control volume that moves with the body. Um, and for instance, if you're making a fluid dynamics code, or especially if you're doing fluid structure interaction, you'll often have moving control volumes that don't deform with the body. <clears throat> but here, we're only going to be concerned with spatially fixed ones, and that makes the calculus a lot easier. All right, so now on to balance of mass. So material does not cross the boundary of a spatial region that convects with the body. And mass is neither created nor destroyed. You know, we're, we're saying that mass is a conserved quantity in continuum mechanics here. <coughs> so it would follow that the mass of a spatial region that convects with the body has to remain constant.
Then we have the mass of P sub T, which will denote capital M of that spatially convecting region, is defined as <coughs> the integral over that spatial region that convects with the material of rho dv. That's constant. So it's time derivative is 0. And that's equal to the time derivative of the whole thing. And from the last lecture, we have that that is equal to the integral. So that was Reynolds' transport theorem. rho dot plus rho <coughs> div v dv is equal to zero. Well, since this must hold for any arbitrary choice of spatial region convecting with the body, we can apply the localization theorem to it and find that the integrand must be equal to zero <coughs> for all spatial points and for all time. So we end up with rho dot, that's the material time derivative, so following the body, plus rho spatial divergence of velocity. Um, well, that is equal to, you can write, so rho dot has a rho prime, the partial derivative with respect to time for a fixed spatial point, plus grad rho dot v. So that's equal to rho prime plus div rho v, and that thing is equal to zero everywhere by the localization theorem. So for all x <coughs> in the spatial body for all time. So in components with index notation, and the summation convention. Uh, we have that <coughs> rho prime, so the partial time derivative holding spatial location fixed, plus partial rho partial spatial xi times the ith component of velocity, plus rho partial <coughs> vi partial xi is equal to 0. Also from our discussion of material and spatial integration, we have this, uh, the integral over the spatial configuration of this, of rho dv, is equal to the integral in the reference configuration of rho j the determinant of f there, dvr. <coughs> Let's let rho sub r denote the density in the reference configuration body. So, you know, we have this reference configuration, and there is a, an associated density everywhere with that.
So the density in the reference configuration might vary with space in the reference configuration, but it certainly shouldn't <clears throat> vary with time because we pick a fixed reference configuration. So we have that the mass of the body in the reference configuration is the integral <coughs> Well, of, of this subregion P of the body of rho R dVr. And that, since mass is conserved, has to equal the mass of it in the spatial configuration for any time. Well, we can do that in the reference configuration like this. So that is equal to the integral over the reference region of rho j dvr. All right, so these two are equal. We can subtract one from the other and get 0 is equal to the integral over that reference region of rho j minus rho r dvr <clears throat> and that is for all p or er, not in subset of subset of the <clears throat> reference body well since that applies for any arbitrary one, we can apply the localization theorem again, and we get an equivalent statement of the balance of mass, which is now purely algebraic, so we don't have a transport relation like this for it, but equivalently. We would have that rho is equal to rho r over j, <coughs> because this has to be 0 for all space and time by the localization theorem. All right, so as a result, we get the pen. We have the integral over the spatial configuration of the region rho phi dv is equal to rho phi j dv. So this is just transferring the integral from the spatial to the reference configuration like we talked about the other lecture. And now we can substitute in. I don't know why I just did that, equals um, the integral over the material region there of rho r over j phi j dv is equal to the integral over the reference region of rho r phi dv. <clears throat> All right, also, given any smooth scalar field phi, the partial derivative of rho phi with respect to time for a fixed spatial point, well, we can use the product rule, that is rho phi prime plus rho, plus rho prime phi. Well, if, if we substitute the balance of mass into that, um, rho prime phi, <coughs> you recall that rho dot is equal to rho prime plus 
rad row dot v. Those are the correspondence between material and spatial time derivatives. Um, so in that case, row prime Yeah, oh, we just have right here, row prime is equal to minus the divergence of row v. That's the one we were looking for there. All right, so that is equal to row v prime minus phi div rho v by balance of mass right there. All right, well, that is equal to rho phi prime minus div rho phi v plus <coughs> rho v dot grad phi. All right, well, we can factor out the rho and combine these two terms. And we find that that is equal to rho phi dot minus div rho phi v. <coughs> so we can move that div to the other side, and we get that rho phi dot is equal to rho phi the whole thing prime plus div rho phi v. So this is a pretty good result. Um, so for instance, if phi <coughs> was, say, the specific energy, the energy per unit mass, then what this is saying is that, you know, following the material, the time derivative of the energy, which would be the time derivative of rho phi, is equal to rho phi dot. Um, because of the balance of mass. And that is equal to <coughs> this if we use the spatial <coughs> time derivative. And this one, this form over here is really nice because this is called conservation law form. And if you're developing like a numerical method or something, you always want it to have the divergence of a flux. You know, we, we don't like discretizing, for instance, terms like this you can get all sorts of problems. Whereas this one behaves nicely. <clears throat> so you'll kinda, if you get into any sort of numerical methods or whatever, you'll go between this and this pretty frequently. We'll call this conservation law form. All right, and so similarly for a vector field G, and again, G's got to be smooth, um, but rho G, the whole thing prime, is equal to rho G prime plus rho prime G is equal to rho g prime minus g div rho v is equal to rho g prime minus div <coughs> rho g tensor product v plus rho grad g acting on the velocity. That is equal to rho g dot minus div come on, rho g tensor product v. So we have that rho g dot is equal to rho g the whole thing prime plus div rho g <coughs> tensor product v. All right, a final one 
is the time derivative. So again, if phi is, say, the energy per unit mass, then rho phi is the energy. So the integral over PT of rho phi dv, the time derivative of that whole shebang, is equal to, we can treat rho phi as a scalar field and apply <clears throat> what we just did to it. So that is equal to, this is the Reynolds transport theorem right here. Um, rho phi, the whole thing, dot plus rho phi div v dv. All right, well, that is equal to the integral over that spatial region of rho dot phi, no, oh, we'll do it the other way, rho phi dot plus rho dot phi plus rho phi div v dv all right and then we can factor out the um the phi from this and we'll see that we have that is equal to rho phi dot plus rho dot plus rho div v phi dv. Well, this is equal to zero because that is the balance of mass. <coughs> so we have that the time derivative of the integral is equal to the integral of rho phi dot dv. And we'll use that consequence of the balance of mass pretty frequently when we do things with like balance of momentum later on. All right, that's it for this one. That was a fairly short lecture. We'll have another one or two on the balance of momentum, prove the existence of a stress tensor called Cauchy's theorem there. And uh, yeah, this part of the class will go by pretty quick. All right, have a good one.